But it's so awful It ought to be unlawful What's that smell? Numero six. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, you hot stuff. You want a date? Yes, I would like a date. Alright, well it's gonna cost you. How much money you got on ya? Hmm, let me see. It seems that I have twenty dollars. 20 bucks? I wouldn't let you pick my nose for 20 bucks. Move on, jerk off. Get the hell out of my face. I love you. What's a girl gotta do to find a decent trick around here? There are times when you may find yourself in trouble, and that's when you need a hero. But sometimes you just want to make fun of someone, and that's when you need a queero. That's when you need a queero. I don't know, that just wasn't funny the third time. Yeah, not funny at all. That's a pretty cool gorilla, though. Yeah, cool gorilla. Let me tell you, Pandy Sucker, right now, okay? This sucker's going international, there's no doubt about it. What we got for you now is a little jam that was sent in to us by this. Oh, well, Scott Gordon, who resides down in Alabama, okay? First Alabama, next, who knows, maybe even Mississippi. International suckers that shut up and watch and enjoy while I'm coming after you. Okay, I know where you are, Ash. I'll be there in a flash. So just shut up and watch. Later.
like hearing a story? I got one for you. It's what's become known as the legend of the 12 G's. Although it's kind of a misnomer because it's not a legend at all. I know for a fact that this happened. It was a couple of years ago and it involved someone I used to know and used to like but then abruptly stopped liking. But anyway, that's an entire different story minutes. This story minutes <clears throat> concerns a, wo a woman I used to work with. We'll call her Jan. She had only been working with us for about two weeks, uh, doing bookkeeping, clerical type stuff. And she was a nice enough person, you know. Did her work, came in on time. No complaints. However, one day, she was very late. She hadn't called. 
She hadn't told us the day before she was going to be late, so we began wondering what happened to her. Well, a few hours later, she finally came in, looking quite dazed. And we said, Jan, what's up? And this is the story she told. She was walking down Canal Street. Some women in a car pulled up next to her and said, excuse me, ma'am, do you read Chinese? Now, Jan is Chinese, so it's, a, it's an all right assumption someone should make to assume that uh, she could read Chinese, but unfortunately, she couldn't. So she told them, no, I'm sorry, I don't. I, I speak it, but I don't read it. And they said, well, that's a shame, because look at this. And the woman in the back seat opens her hands, and there's a gigantic wad of money wrapped in this paper with Chinese writing on it. She said, I just went to make a payphone call, and stuck underneath the payphone was this brick. So I opened it up, and it was this wad of money. Now, I think I have a plan, but I'm not sure. Why don't you get in the car and we'll figure this out? So Jan, eyes growing larger and larger by the second, gets into the back seat of the car with these women, and uh, they proceed to drive away. On the course of their drive, they count the money, and it's about, I forget exactly how much, but it was an obscene amount of money. It was about eighty or ninety thousand dollars in cash. <sighs> So she says, listen, I don't know what this writing says. I don't know what this money is. I'm not going to give it to the cops because they're just going to take it on some pretense that it's evidence or something. And I'm not going to let them do that. I called my boss, who's a lawyer, and he gave me this plan. And I think I'm going to do it. Here's what it involves. We're all going to go to our banks. We're going to get out money. We're going to add it to this money that we just found. Then we're going to give it to my boss. He's going to write up papers that show that we made an investment in a company. And then this is our dividend payoff on the company when it made money. That way, there won't be any trail where the money came from. We can keep the money and we'll be a whole lot richer after today. So Jan, you know, obviously being seduced by these huge amounts of cash, goes and says, that, this sounds excellent. So the, they drive to the first woman's bank. She goes in. She makes a, a withdrawal, like, you know, however much money, a few thousand dollars. Then they go to the other woman's. Then they go to Jan's bank, and she withdraws her entire bank account, which is $12,000, and gives it to the women. So now they've got this gigantic wad that's well over $100,000. They drive back downtown. The women say, all right, here's my office. Uh, Get out and, you know, go up. It's on the second floor. Just go up. There's a, there are two chairs right to the side. Just go up and wait there. You know, when Mr. Jones comes out of his office, he says, are you her? You say yes, and you go in, and he'll drop the papers. You know, we, we'll be there in a sec, so it won't get that far. But, you know, if, if he comes out and says, are you the girl? You say yes. We're going to go park the car, and uh, we'll be up in a sec. So Jan says, all right, all right, I'll see you in a few minutes. So she goes up the stairs. She sits in the seat. And it's, you know, like an office. People walking back and forth looking at her. And she waits. And she waits. And she waits. And she waits. And just when you think she's done waiting, she waits some more. No Mr. Jones comes out of his office saying, are you the girl, or are you her, or whatever. Her business partners who went to park their car never arrive. So she's beginning to grow a little bit suspicious. So uh, she walks over to a secretary who's kind of been eyeing her strangely this entire hour or however long she's been sitting there and says, excuse me, is this the uh, law office of Mr. Jones? And the woman says, no, this is, uh, this is a subsidiary of Chase Manhattan Bank, you know, this is just a bank office. And she says, well, does a uh, Mr. Jones work here? And the secretary says, no. And Jan says, oh, okay, thank you. Leaves the office, walks down the two flights of stairs back onto the street, looks around briefly, doesn't see her business partners. 
walks you know over to work where I was which is only a couple blocks away walks in the front door looking quite dazed we all look at her and say Jan what's wrong she comes over near my desk crying slumps down into the corner still crying I say again Jan what's wrong and then she relays the story of the 12 G's her entire bank account wiped out one fell swoop there is a postscript to the story when we heard what had happened we said well you've obviously been scammed you need to go uh, tell the cops so she called the cops some cops came over you know before they went inside to talk to Jan they said you know did someone here call us and we said yeah and they said well what happened and we said well I prefer if you know she tells you the story she's inside and they say well just what happened just tell us the cops are being kind of assholeish about the whole thing and I say well essentially this uh, woman that we work with gave her life savings to these women and the women left and uh, she never saw them again it was a scam and the cops said but she gave them the money she wasn't robbed of it she gave it to them and we said yeah and they said she was willingly handed the money to them and we said yeah apparently and the cops said okay kinda of smirking went inside to talk to Jan and that's the end of the story the story the legend of the 12 G's so let this be a lesson to you if uh, some people ever come up to you randomly with a huge wad of money and offer to get you in on some you know too good to be true sounding deal it is too good to be true alright take care thanks for listening and uh, if you get a chance and you're by the liquor store pick up a bottle of Macallan it's uh, one of the finer whiskeys you can buy it's very tasty story minutes are minutes in which I tell you a story Story minutes are minutes in which I tell you a story. Fun with wild animals. Are we rolling? Yes, we're rolling. Yeah, alright. Don't hold the camera still. I can see you shaking from here. But it's a lion. I'm scared. I know it's a lion. That's why I'm doing this. You think it'd be any fun if it wasn't the lion? No, I guess not. Just, just keep the camera on me, alright? Here we go. Get closer. You're too far away. We're still rolling. Alright, let's get out of here. I think he's mad. Fun with wild animals. Well, hi there, folks. How you all doing tonight? My name's Uriah Bleep. I'm a singer-songwriter, and I have a little ditty I'd like to play for you right now. It's about an experience I had, oh, just a few hours ago. Hope you like it.
Now I was on the subway On my way to work But one of the other passengers Was a friggin' jerk He launched something awful Out of his behind It was an A-bomb Of the worst kind I held my nose I let out a yelp But whatever I did Didn't seem to help I started to scream I started to shout I started to cry I started to pout And now I got the Santa ain't gonna come this year cause he's gonna find out and it's all cause some jerk off douchebag ripped one on the train. Blues. Thank you, thank you. You can look on the internet for my CD. It's a whole bunch of ditties that I write about. Things that happen to me all the time. The things that's always happening to me.
Radio Cease.